This is Dr. Russell Blaylock, and you're listening to the Blaylock Health Channel. I wanted to talk about just a very short subject, sulfites. We used to hear a lot about sulfite reactions, particularly headaches, and we don't hear a lot about it anymore. So I thought we should bring it up again. There are some new things we've discovered about sulfites, uh, and that would be important uh, in your diet. Now, sulfites are a chemical compound that's used to protect foods from spoilage and browning reactions like when you cut an apple and you see it uh, turn brown on the surface. And it helps protect against the loss of flavor of foods and uh, some suppression of bacterial growth. It's also used as a dough conditioner and a bleach uh, of certain starchy foods. And it's used to stabilize certain types of medications as well. Uh, Another form is sulfur dioxide, which is a gas. And it's used to preserve vegetables that are shipped long distances. Uh, Being here in Mississippi, uh, most of our vegetables are shipped from California all across the country. And to uh, maintain the vegetables in a fresh state, they expose it to sulfur dioxide. And unfortunately, that is converted to sulfite in the vegetables. The most common form of sulfites, and you'll see this on food labels, is uh, things like sulfur dioxide, uh, sodium sulfite, sodium and potassium metabosulfite, sodium calcium or potassium bisulfite. Uh, These sulfite compounds have been used to process food for about 200 years by the the food industry. But recent research has shown some problems, so the FDA has put some prohibitions uh, on sulfite use. For instance, they can no longer use them to make vegetables crisp and colorful, uh, like they used to do in salad bars, uh, particularly with foods that are eaten raw. Companies are required to list sulfites on the label of all processed foods uh, that exceeds 10 parts per million. And foods sold in bulk must have posted signs informing the consumer uh, that these foods contain sulfites. An attempt was made to label potatoes treated with sulfite, but a lawsuit by the, quote, fresh potato industry lobbyists blocked this legislation. So French fries, as they cut them, uh, can be coated with sulfites. And uh, you should be aware of that as a source of sulfite toxicity. Now, in 1985, the FDA established a voluntary adverse reaction monitoring system to track sulfite reactions in foods and beverages. But you have to realize that only a very small percentage of these reactions are ever reported. Over a 10-year period, they collected 1,097 reactions, which included some fatalities. It's estimated that 1% of asthmatics are at risk from eating sulfites or high sulfite foods. Usually is found in the worst asthma cases. And among cortisone dependent asthmatics, in other words, really fragile asthmatic, 20% will react adversely to uh, sulfites in foods. And occasionally some cases of asthma seems to begin with exposure to sulfites in food. But we do know that it will make a significant number of asthmatics worse. Now, the body normally makes some sulfite just in the course of uh, metabolism. That's why you'll find it naturally in in some uh, things like wine. Even organic wines will have some sulfites. It's just part of metabolism, particularly as we metabolize a certain sulfur-containing type amino acids like taurine, cysteine, and methionine. And the neutrophils, the white blood cells in our blood, make sulfites. And the, what the neutrophil will do is secrete them in a, when it, it comes in contact with bacteria in order to kill that bacteria. And they've measured sulfite levels in people during a pneumonia infection and found that the sulfite level will rise appreciably in their blood, indicating that a lot of uh, white blood cells are trying to fight the infection. And once they get over the infection, the sulfite level falls. Now, all of your tissues in your body contain an enzyme called sulfite oxidase. And the purpose of this enzyme is to neutralize the uh, sulfite uh, so that it 
won't harm your tissues. And it converts the sulfite into sulfate, which can be used to make other biochemical compounds. Occasionally, you'll see babies that have a genetic disease. They're born with a defect in this enzyme, and they'll die at birth, uh, usually from uh, unrelenting seizures, uh, brain destruction, and they have abnormally formed brains. So it's quite toxic if you have high levels of sulfite without this protective enzyme. People normally have high levels of the enzyme in their liver, kidney, skeletal muscles, heart, and brain. So the most important organs are protected uh, against sulfite damage. Lower levels are found in the thymus, spleen, white blood cells, colon, small intestine, and lungs. Uh, so these can be more vulnerable to these sulfites. Now, the, the amount of this enzyme in your tissues is not always the same throughout your lifetime. We know, for instance, uh, this protective enzyme decreases with aging, particularly in chronic illnesses. And that's why sometimes people uh, go through life, can eat a certain food without any problem whatsoever, and suddenly they become sensitive to sulfites. They either have an asthmatic attack or they have severe headaches from the, uh, the sulfite. And that's because their enzyme has become defective. Uh, this is a molylebdenum requiring enzyme. And so people that have severe deficiencies in molylebdenum, which is not common, will have impaired function of that enzyme and be very sensitive to uh, sulfites in their foods and drinks. Now, wines with uh, sulfites are notorious for causing headaches. Uh, usually white wines more than red because it has a higher content of sulfites, but occasionally you see the opposite. And just as an interesting aside, one study looked at this and found that the problem was not always caused by the sulfites. They found that hymenoptera can get into the wine. Now, hymenoptera is a classification uh, in biology of bees and wasps. And they found that the venom, because these bees and wasps get mixed in with the grapes and crushed up, uh, and the venom will end up in the wine, that people react to the venom when they drink the wine. Uh, sulfites in foods are known as a rather potent trigger for migraine-type headaches, particularly in children. Recently, it's been shown that sulfites can also trigger tension-type headaches. So most of your major headaches can be precipitated by sulfites. Sulfites, interestingly, are linked to glutamate toxicity, that is, excitotoxicity. And as we've said in many of the broadcasts, it's excitotoxicity is central to a number of neurological disorders. High sulfite in the brain and tissues inhibits an enzyme called glutamate dehydrogenase. Uh, this enzyme is very important for protecting the brain against toxicity by its own glutamate. So when the enzyme is defective, glutamate levels can rise in the brain and produce problems. The glutamate receptors in the lung, the same thing happens when this enzyme is suppressed. Glutamate levels rise in the lungs and can produce spasm of the, the bronchioles producing an asthma attack. It's known that sulfite itself can trigger inflammation. It can trigger the massive production of free radicals and lipid peroxidation products. And it can be a source of chronic inflammation. And it can worsen pre-existing inflammation. For instance, if you have an autoimmune disease or cancer or arthritis, cardiovascular disease, or one of the neurodegenerative diseases and you're consuming food with a lot of sulfites in it, it could make these worse. Experimentally, they create special rats that have very low levels of this sulfite oxidase enzyme, that is the protective enzyme, so they can study the effects of sulfite. And it's shown that sulfites can cause uh, brain inflammation, particularly in the hippocampus, the part of the brain that has to do with recent memory and formation of memories. It also suppresses a number of brain antioxidant enzymes like superoxide, dismutase, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. So it can uh, make the brain a lot more vulnerable to damage by other things. The sulfite, by lowering glutathione in the brain, particularly in the substantia nigra, the part of the brain that where most of the pathology occurs in Parkinson's disease, this is very important because this could uh, enhance the risk of Parkinson's disease. It's also known that sulfites 
worsen the toxicity of a very powerful free radical called peroxynitrite. This uh, free radical is very common in many neurodegenerative diseases as well as other diseases like heart failure and atherosclerosis. So sulfites can greatly enhance the damaging effect of that free radical. Uh, sulfites are known to precipitate seizures and worsen seizures in people who already have the seizures. So what can you do to reduce this toxicity? Well, you avoid the foods that are high in sulfites, particularly the wines. Uh, you can switch to organic wines, which have a lower sulfite concentration. You need to avoid things, like we said, that are high in sulfites, like beer, dried fruits, pre-cut or peeled potatoes, uh, guacamole, molasses, shrimp, soup mixes, jams, jellies, they all have it, and high levels, hard cider, beet sugar, corn sweeteners, and gelatin. Uh, we see naturally high sulfite levels in maple syrup, pectins, salmon, dried cod, cornstarch, soy products, and in eggs. Another thing to do is increase your antioxidant intake because a lot of the damage is done by free radicals in the body. Uh, that is, increase your intake of vitamin C, E, the carotenoids, and the protective flavonoids. And you can stimulate your detoxification system, for instance, by taking uh, indol 3 carbonyl, curcumin, quercetin, mixed carotenoids, silymarin, and B vitamins. They all improve the detoxification system. And it's been shown that R-lipoic acid uh, reduces brain toxicity of the sulfites. Uh, sulfites destroy vitamin B1 in food, so you uh, want to increase your intake uh, of the B vitamins in general, but particularly thiamine. Well, I hope you've learned something about sulfite toxicity that can be of value to you. If you've enjoyed listening to this week's podcast and would like to hear previous episodes of the Blaylock Health Channel, go to our website at www.blaylockhealthchannel.com. You can also subscribe to my health newsletter, the Blaylock Wellness Report, which gives more in-depth information on these subjects and provides references citing the scientific sources. And I have uh, several books that go into many of these subjects in a lot of detail, like the health and nutrition secrets that can save your life, natural strategies for cancer patients, excitotoxins, taste that kills. So I would encourage you to look into these. I think you'll find them of use. Thank you. The information contained within these programs is not intended to replace or contradict that of your physician. This information is for educational purposes only. 